Well, I sincerely hope not. Um, you know, the fact is that, that you can, you can, polls can say anything, and he's still way below. And people do not forget that easily. He is a man who's created a government that has produced s such appalling results. We have a, a, a defence um, secretary who is, um, was, was completely humiliated in Moscow, who can't tell the Baltic from the Black Sea. You had the previous one who, who um, uh, presided over the disaster of Afghanistan while by being on the beach and is now the deputy prime minister. You know, so this, you know, this is just a government that, that's just awful. And it's, it's completely his fault because this is what he's chosen. Plus, he has, watching Zelensky in, in Parliament today, broadcast of Parliament, you know, there is a man, there is a leader. He has morals, he has honour, he has courage. And I look at Boris, the, the greased piglet, and he must have been almost hoping for this war to happen so that he could move into his his um, Thatcher moment. I mean, if he could have got himself into the blue frock and the pearls and stood in a tank, I'm sure he'd have tried it. It's you no, know, he, he is, he is, people will also not forget what he did. They say, party gate, oh, who cares about it? You know, there's, there's far greater things to worry about. But party gate goes to the heart of who he is. And he absolutely cheated on this country. He cheated on this country by cheating on the, on the laws that he made himself. And all the hundreds of thousands of people who have been bereaved will never forget. And the rest of us won't forget either. Suzanne Evans, is Nina Mishkoff right? Is Boris Johnson still damaged goods? Well, I think Nina's right and wrong. I think to say that Boris Johnson wanted this war to save his reputation is a quite ridiculous thing to say, to be honest. Um, but there's no doubt that uh, after Partygate, where his poll ratings were absolutely at rock bottom, and if you look at the progress of the opinion polls over the whole COVID pandemic and going forward to the war in Ukraine, that was absolutely his low point. And I agree, it was a complete scandal. Um, I think I'm with what Dawn Neeson said earlier on that one. I'm not quite sure I can personally forgive him for that one. But now there's no doubt now that this war has come along. As you say, it is in a sense this Falkland moment. There is nothing like a crisis to actually uh, give a leader a renewed sense of purpose and a new moral mission. And there's no doubt that that's done that. And to be fair, some, as someone who's been critical of Boris Johnson in the, in the past, he has risen to the challenge on this. There's no doubt about that. He was leading, in a sense, the world response to sanctions on Ukraine. He was the one pushing for the ban on the swift financial transactions. Uh, he was the one that uh, you know, Britain's already done quite a lot since the Salisbury poisoning in 2018. Uh, Britain has been uh, pretty much at the forefront, really, of giving support to the Ura Ukrainian army. Um, we've put, I've trained, I think, 22,000 troops, uh, um, among other things. So, so we have. A, he's looking like he's got a good track record on on this. Although, of course, that's probably not his decision 